Hi, my name's John Lampy. I run a company called Green Shoots. In this video, I'm going to explain how to avoid nine common mistakes often made in trying to control knotweed. The first mistake is trying to kill knotweed by repeatedly cutting or mowing the knotweed. Daniel Jones and colleagues wrote an excellent piece criticizing the idea of mowing knotweed. As Jones and associates noted, there are no examples of successful long-term invasive knotweed management with mowing. As they observed, this is true even though some efforts included as many as 20 mowings in a year. A second major problem is that mowing can spread knotweed infestations. Knotweed is very effective at vegetative spread. For example, even a small segment of knotweed, as long as it includes a node, can reroot. This makes mowing, unfortunately, a very efficient way to spread knotweed. The second mistake is trying to kill knotweed by just covering it with tarps or landscape fabric. Over the years, I have talked with many people who have tried covering knotweed to kill it. It almost never works. Oftentimes, the covering breaks down, especially when exposed to sun. Also, knotweed is surprisingly resourceful at finding ways to reach light. It will find the seams in the covering and work its way through them. If you are going to cover to kill knotweed, make sure you do your research. You have to cover with more than just tarps or plastic. I recommend this article from Saigon at the New Hampshire Department of Agriculture on the steps you should take if you want to cover. And remember, it will take a long time to kill the knotweed, at least five years. So if you want to replant the area infested with knotweed sooner than in five years, use a different method of control. The third mistake is one that people doing herbicide treatments make, namely doing their treatment too early in the growing season. This is a big problem. Many people are unfamiliar with knotweed. When they learn they have some on their property, they want to deal with it immediately. Timing, however, is critical. This is a site with some scattered knotweed. It's early in the growing season. The problem with treating knotweed this early is that all the carbohydrates of the knotweed are being sent to the new growth in the stems and leaves. Any herbicide absorbed by the knotweed will also be sent to that new growth. You will get top kill, but you won't affect the knotweed rhizome. The knotweed rhizome is underground. It is where most of the energy of the knotweed is stored over the winter. Think of it like an underground trunk of a tree. And the rhizome can get big. They can grow to a foot or 30 centimeters in diameter. To kill the rhizome, the herbicide must follow the carbohydrates being translocated to the rhizome. Those carbohydrates and the herbicide must move first into the crown and then into the rhizome. Finally, the herbicide can kill the buds and other live tissue that are part of the rhizome. In what season are carbohydrates being sent to the knotweed rhizomes? Jones and Associates did the most comprehensive set of trials on controlling knotweed. They confirmed that late season applications were most successful thus indicating that late season is when most of the carbohydrates are being sent down to the rhizomes. How late should those applications be done? They don't really specify. I recommend people apply herbicide after knotweed flowers. As Bash Tanova and Associates observed, the rhizome is the most effective sink in late autumn during shoot senescence. Shoot senescence occurs after flowering. If you wait until after flowering, the knotweed will still have a robust green color and will be fully capable of taking up the herbicide. Once taken up, the herbicide can then be sent, along with the carbohydrates, down to the rhizome as the knotweed prepares for winter. One key thing, you want to make sure you do your herbicide application before a killing frost. In the next section, I will talk about how to time your herbicide applications. Mistake number four, doing only one herbicide application. I like to do two herbicide applications in the fall that are spaced about two weeks apart. This requires a little planning. It means the second application you do must occur before that killing frost. 
Here's a first application of foam herbicide to a small infestation of knotweed. If you use foam herbicide, I recommend you cover about 15 to 20 percent of the green foliage. The good thing about foam herbicide is that it clings tenaciously to the foliage and takes about twice as long to dry as conventional spray. This helps ensure good uptake by the knotweed leaves. The knotweed might look something like this before the second treatment. Some of the leaves are yellow, but many are still green. You want to treat the green ones. The nice thing about the second treatment is that you can focus on foliage that might not have received an adequate dose during the first treatment. For example, smaller stems that were hidden beneath larger ones. The fifth mistake that many people make is cutting knotweed the summer before a fall application. Now, this isn't necessarily a critical mistake. Jones and colleagues found that summer cutting really made no difference in the effectiveness of the herbicide treatment in the fall. However, by cutting in the summer, you also risk spreading fragments of living knotweed tissue, as mentioned earlier. That primarily is why I consider a cutting to be a mistake. If the site has tall knotweed, I recommend making paths through the knotweed the summer before by bending the knotweed down into the sides of the paths. Make a grid that gives you access to all portions of the stand. I explain how to do this in our video on treating a large stand of knotweed. The sixth mistake is not being persistent. If you do your application properly, you should have a great result and kill over 90% of the knotweed on the site. At a site like this one with a successful treatment, as other plants are coming up in the spring, you may not see much evidence of knotweed. However, if you look closely, you will start to see plants like these. What are they? They don't necessarily look like knotweed. These are knotweed plants that have been stunted and deformed by the herbicide application, but are still hanging on. At this point, these small plants don't have much effect on the ecosystem of the area. You may think you can ignore them. Don't do that. During the spring following your first herbicide treatments, I advocate doing everything possible to deplete the stored carbohydrates that are still left in the knotweed clone. One way to do this is by digging out the knotweed crowns that are still alive. Wait until knotweed stems start coming up in the spring. That way you'll know exactly which ones are still viable. For example, I checked these knotweed and determined which ones had viable buds. I dug these crowns out. The good thing about digging at this point is that you have already killed the vast majority of the knotweed clone with the fall herbicide applications. This leaves only scattered viable crowns to deal with. And as you can see, severing the rhizome stems isn't that difficult with a sharp shovel. Once you have dug out the crowns, you can separate the dead stems from the crown. Put the still viable crowns in a plastic waste bag. Put those bags in a sunny location and let the summer sun cook the knotweed crowns. At the end of the summer, you can then dump out the knotweed crowns. Chop into some of them to make sure they are dead. But be careful with those crown segments. This is a pile of knotweed crowns that were stored in a plastic bag left in a location that turned out to be too shady. After a month of storage, as you can see, the crowns were still viable and sending out shoots in search of light. Or take a look at this, a crown that was dug up but left on the ground for over a month. There was clearly enough moisture for the crown to generate a small new stem. This is why you need to carefully dispose of those dug up crowns. Later in the spring, stop digging up the crowns. Instead, let the remaining knotweed grow so that you can retreat it in the autumn. The knotweed plant shown here is the perfect size for a spot treatment in the autumn after it finishes flowering. Mistake number seven is waiting too long to plant native plants or other desirable plants that can compete with the knotweed. You want to introduce native plants as early as possible after your treatments. In fact, you might consider spreading native seed in the fall after your treatments are finished. The seed won't be affected by the herbicide as long as you wait about a week after you do your spraying. Proper planning can lead to a big transformation at your site. 
you can go from this to a site like this about two years later where native plants are thriving. But even after a number of years, knotweed was still present at this site, albeit at minimal density. As long as the knotweed is kept at bay, it will have almost no effect on the ecology of the site. When you do your plantings, also consider woody species if the site warrants them. This site has river birch planted near the water. River birch grow fast and are tall enough to suppress growth of knotweed. Mistake number eight is not knocking down the dead stems the season before you do your treatments at the site. This is an infestation early spring after the knotweed had started to grow. At this site, the old stems were not knocked down the year before. Late in the year, you might see this. This is a site with dead stems from multiple previous years of growth. These dead stems make it very difficult for a person to get into the interior of the stand. In addition, when herbicide is applied to a stand like this, the dead stems intercept herbicide, reducing treatment effectiveness and wasting herbicide. But the worst mistake you can make is not doing anything. This is especially true at sites near waterways. This was a knotweed infestation behind a fast food restaurant along a trout stream called Paint Creek in Northeast Iowa. Knotweed infestations like this provide miserable habitat for riparian species. Even worse, this kind of infestation can easily spread, especially in spring when flooding occurs. The crowns and rhizome fragments can be washed downstream and spread the infestation for miles. Here is a full map of that knotweed infestation along Paint Creek. The knotweed is identified in bright purple and it lines miles and miles of the creek. You can easily see how a successive flood events spread the knotweed downstream. The key, therefore, is attacking knotweed early before it becomes a massive infestation like this one. 